uh, let's talk about a decision made Sunday. Two players voted into the Hall of Fame uh, by a committee. George Steinbrenner was not. We had a chance to talk to Joe Torre about it. Wanted to get your thoughts. Uh, well, my thoughts aren't good ones. Um, I really, you know, I, I'm, I'm actually stunned that something like that could happen. Um, I was privileged to know him, you know, as a, when I was a player representative. So I negotiated from across the table with him, and then I had the pleasure of working for him. And um, certainly, you know, uh, absolutely what we call a Hall of Fame owner. Um, I mean, there could be people who, you know, love him, hate him, whatever. You, you can't deny that he was, you know, a force for change um, and that he did a lot for the game of baseball and certainly a his an historic figure. So I'm not sure what the criteria are, but it seems to me, you know, check, 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 and check. So. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned working for him because Jack had the pleasure of covering him. I had the pleasure of playing for him, and you knew as an owner he was going to give you everything you needed to do to win. Yes. Tell us what it was like to work for the man. Well, um, it's it's interesting because when I when I sat across the table from him, um, I was able to call him George, and then when I came to work for him, it was Mr. Steinbrenner. <laughs> so, um, you know, he once again he would give you everything that you needed and more um, if you worked for him. He did. Um, he was the best training for any person in baseball because um, he had an he. Had had an uncanny sense of asking you the one thing that you didn't know. So he had just an uncanny sense. You know, you'd come in prepared. There would be people that would run down the hallway, you know, with files flying everywhere. And he, they'd get to his office and, um, you know, draw himself up. And he'd ask the one thing they weren't prepared for. <laughs> so I learned very easily, not easily, I learned very early that the, the standard stock line was, um, I, I don't know the answer to that, but I will go find out and, and let you know. <laughs> Gene, you've had such a versatile and varied career. You were a dancer. You were an actor. You decided then to go to law school and you're an attorney but you're also a couple years shy now of two decades as an assistant GM with the Yankees which is the longest tenure of any assistant GM what career traits have allowed you to have that sustainability um, well, I feel like, you know, Miss America. Well, first of all, <laughs> a sense of humor. Um, I, um, you know, I also, um, I enjoy being an assistant GM. I mean, who wouldn't enjoy being an assistant GM for the New York Yankees, for Brian Cashman? Um, Brian and I have worked across the table from each other, I said, and, and now together for almost 18 years. Um, and probably my, my long tenure um, is because, I'm, I mean, I've also been very clear I don't want to be a general manager. Um, and so a lot of my, my brethren, um, as I call them. A lot of my brethren do want to be general managers, so they, they move up and out. But um, it, when you're given an opportunity to do what, what we are given an opportunity to do at the New York Yankees, um, first with um, George slash Mr. Steinbrenner, and now under Hal's tenure, um, you know, there, it really, you do feel that you are being, it, you sort of reach the pinnacle of where you would like to be in baseball. And you're able to achieve great things, working with great people. So what more, you know, can you ask? Gene, you speak so passionately about your role with the Yankees. What is it about it that's so fulfilling for you? Um, I think when I first came to the Yankees, Brian said that um, that um, I'd like you, and this reminds me of a Woody Allen line, which is, you know, you can't repeat on air, but um, but um, he said, what, what you're doing for players, I want you to do for the Yankees. So I have been able to, um, the Yankees have been like a, a player for me, and I've been able to represent them um, in a variety of ways um, and, and been able to still explore the business and legal side of baseball um, as I did before. I always say that if I were um, if I were still at Paramount Pictures Corporation, I mean, if, I, if I were still in the movie business, I would be sort of the head of business and legal affairs for the um, for the team. So it's only, I just do baseball. I don't do the stadium or licensing or financing or anything like that. So. But you're also uh, steeped heavily in the international market. We know that. Um, from a different aspect, the Yankees are playing the Red Sox in London this year. Yes. As an organization, as a person who I'm sure is going to that, how excited are you about that? Oh, I'm thrilled. I'm thrilled. I mean, I've been an Anglophile all my life, um, and to be able to go over to London um, to be the first two teams to do so, um, I also think there's something wonderfully historic about it. You know, you've got the Red Sox. I hope they dump some tea into the harbor before they go, and, and you know, the Yankees. Um, and and so I, I think it'll be tremendous. I hope that the people in um, in the U.K. are become as excited about it as we are. Um, there are certainly, you know, you know, cricket has, eh, I don't really understand it, um, but it has some connection to baseball. Right. Um, I know our, our players are really, really excited about it. Um, and I would like to say, you know, far be it from me to, you know, uh, 
throw a laurel at um, our friends up north, but I will. Um, from uh, a women in baseball perspective, um, Raquel Ferreira, who is the senior v VP um, of um, baseball at the Red Sox, is the only other um, you know, high-ranking woman in, in the baseball operations department, and I think it's also a wonderful, unique opportunity for um, Raquel and I, my brother, as I call her, for Raquel and I to, you know, to go and, and, and promote women in baseball. We have so many women who work in baseball, um, and a lot of times they're not really seen, so I'm looking forward to that. Party. Gene, you're, you're essentially in on every deal that the Yankees make. Brian Cashman has called you a pit bull, tenacious when it comes to Ooh. negotiating. <laughs> and, and, and you look at that. Are there, is there a deal over the years that stands out to you that you're particularly proud of? Um, I think I'm actually, uh, I mean, obviously I'm very um, proud of the fact that um, Matsui chose to come to the Yankees and, and how that transition worked. Um, I think I'm probably, um, uh, I feel like knock on Formica. I mean, I think I'm, <laughs> I think I'm, I'm proud of, of the fact that during my tenure, I don't think that we have, um, we haven't lost a player, um, and, and that's not in terms of negotiating, because plenty of players have, have, you know, gone elsewhere, but we haven't done anything so that we would lose a draft pick, lose a player, um, been disciplined in any way, so it's really, you have to kind of constantly, it's like the, you know, the stick your finger in the, in the dam so that the water doesn't come crashing through, so get my Wonder Woman bracelets on it. Yes. <laughs> hey, by the way, with your theatrical and acting background, is Vegas in your wheelhouse at all? Oh, absolutely not. Abs no, no, no. You're more Darling. treading the boards on Broadway. Darling, right? this is not really. <laughs> Bob, you're working on your British accent for the trip in June. I'm ready for him. <laughs> Gene, thanks for joining us. Thank we you. Thank it. you very thanks. much. All right, we